Hey, tubers! Welcome back for another adventure. Here we have the wire harness in all its glory, and you, you just got to get rid of it. I mean, good luck putting this back together again. Now that all the distraction has been removed, and this is important, I'm going to show you guys how to wire this thing. We might use part of the old wire harness. As a matter of fact, I think I will use part of the old wire harness, and I'm just going to show you the simplest way to do it. First of all, you need to determine what kind of stator this thing has in it. Does it have the kind of stator that only charges a battery or does it have a stator with an extra coil which powers up the CDI unit? Just so happens I have this loose stator here. Thank you Kevin Bergeron. And you could see two different coils. One of these coils powers the stator and the other one cre creates the power that goes to your voltage regulator which charges your battery. The bigger one does the battery, the smaller one does the stator. What do the wires look like? And this is important. See our friend there, the blue and white? That goes to this pulse generator, right? See the green? That goes to ground, that goes to this case. You see the black and red? That goes to this guy. Generally speaking, the, wi the wire colors for most of the China stuff, not always, but for most of the China stuff, that's true. Now you say, what about charging my battery? That's the yellow and that's the white. So the yellow and white, right? go into your voltage regulator. Typically, this green wire, this ground, right, somehow or another, it's on the engine case, it's got to get to the frame, it's got to get to a whole bunch of places. So typically, there's many legs that come off of this. Into your voltage regulator goes typically ground and these two guys. Occasionally, your voltage regulator picks up ground because it's bolted to the frame. Sometimes this ground is what goes direct, um, goes to the frame and so forth. Um, sometimes as time passes, eventually this wire turns black. A lot of times if your all-terrain alter, vehicle has a 12 volt battery in it, it turns black. So. We've talked about all of this. Now let's take a look at what we have. So this engine has two sets of wires coming out of it. One of it up close, which makes it look like the stator bunch. One of them back here, you could kind of see it would be um, on the shifting drum. The ones for the shifting drum light up a bunch of lights on the dashboard if you want to show that if you're one two three four and sometimes they feed those wires into a digital display that actually puts a one two three four up on the dashboard now you see a second set of wires and back to the blue and white what does that do it goes right to the stator uh, then you see a yellow and then you see a pink what that's telling you, first of all, you don't see a green. Green means ground is coming from the case, right? Um, they didn't wire it out for you. They didn't make it easy. 
and this ground is really really thin so once again I'm thinking there should be a separate wire coming right off the case and if there isn't one you should add it because you need ground for everything in your life what you don't see also you don't see a black wire with a red stripe that tells me this engine wants a DC powered CDI there is no coil there's no separate coil to power the CDI so you gotta go with the DC CDI right you probably only have coils in there well, you do only have coils in here you have this coil maybe there's a pair of them but they want the coils to um, charge a battery and once you have a charged battery you hook your CDI to that and that's where you get your spark from so we know we want to hook this up to this somehow right and just so happens that they did include a few of the wires this is the wire that plugs into the CDI and this is the wire that plugs into the engine so what we're going to do is they are hooked together somewhat but I'm going to cut them all loose from this harness and rewire it I went to this mess of ugly wires and I cut the connector loose that goes to the CDI you know blue and white green black and yellow and for power this one used uh, black and blue so I cut that loose and I also loosened up the harness that goes to the starter once that was done it's just a matter of playing match the wire right green goes to the engine green goes to the ground on the um, ignition coil green goes into the CDI and green eventually went down into the, um, the, the negative on the battery. I also have this green wire that goes to the starter. And if I touch this here, right, we'll, um, we'll actually power up the starter. See this other wire here? This is the blue and black which actually powers up the CDI. So the CDI has ground, the CDI has the blue and white. The blue and white wire comes down and goes into the CDI at the um, CDI um, pulse generator input. So only four wires go to the CDI. You can see the four of them there. You can see they're all hooked up nice. And what do we have left to do? What we have left to do is to see if this thing starts. One thing I do want to warn you guys on, you could do this whole hack job and boy, I'm all ready and I'm all ready to go. And Harvey said it was going to work and it doesn't work. Harvey is a horse's behind. Okay. Do remember, these things want 12 volts. Right, your starter will probably turn around and spin around somewhere at 10 volts, but these things want 12 volts to throw a spark. So, if your jump pack is a little bit weak and using the jump pack to power your CDI, if your voltage drifts much below, I'm going to say 11.75, 11 and a half, this thing stops throwing a spark. So here you are you check the voltage on your pack it says 12.5 let's say you engage your starter your voltage goes down <laughs> to somewhere around 10 and a half this thing doesn't spark so you let it go and suddenly it fires once right that's because your voltage went back up to 12 but at that point you don't have enough momentum to keep it going so you try it again and once again it cranks until you kind of release it it fires once 
and it's still not working. So now you're thinking Harvey's not that smart. No, your voltage is below 12 volts. So please, please, please. A lot of times I use a completely separate battery to power up the CDI. I'm not going to do it in my in this case because I I think my jump pack is pretty strong. But I might just surprise myself. Oh, by the way, the other side of the spark plug wire goes to the spark plug, right? And the black and yellow wire goes to the primary of that right all hooked up all happy now it's just a matter of setting up the wire and see if this thing will fire up okay let's see if she fires up first things first right little miniature gas tank there little starting fluid little food will do ya little power and we have ignition I think I'm going to try to hit the throttle So there you go. We built a full wiring harness out of absolute junk. Junk, I say. Um, I just want to extend this video a little bit longer. This thing will stall in a second. If I had to hook up one of the voltage regulators, hopefully I have a loose one. Yeah, there we go. This isn't quite the right one to go on here. See the wires coming out of the engine, right? Those two that are folded over, the pink and the yellow, and taped up. That's because there's power coming out of those. The pink and the yellow, right? Pink or pink yellow. Out of this thing here, also, you have the red and the black. Green goes to ground. And there you go, you're charging your battery, right? <laughs> pink goes to pink, yellow goes to yellow, green goes to ground, the black one goes to the negative on your battery, and the red one goes to the positive on your battery. Typically they do not put a fuse on these, they run them direct. I guess internally they have a blocking diode. So if I had to wire that up, that's how I would do it, and I would plug this right into a wire harness. The colors I give you are 95% true. You'll probably find five bikes in a hundred, I don't know, one out of 20, where they use a completely bizarre wire, um, color coding system, completely nuts. Um, I found that on that um, 260 cc Polaris clone, that Taland, um, Manco Talon, I think it's called. Um, they had a completely crazy wiring system. Um, the way they color coded everything, you literally had to trace out every wire. Typically for the China stuff and a lot of the Honda stuff, um, this is pretty universal. The Suzuki's and the others, sometimes they, uh, they change the color, particularly of the uh, pulse generator wire. And the way I normally decode those is I either go out to eBay or a color photograph of their CDI, quite honestly, of their entire stator assembly. And once you do that, you can kind of look inside take it apart a lot of times they show the individual wire colors and where they go and then you can figure it out that way if you're really really desperate i mean a pulse generator um the clone version they're, they're not crazy expensive or even a um, used coil that comes with everything right if it costs you I don't know, 30, 40 bucks to get the information by buying a used one 
and putting it on the shelf for parts and then you could decode the wires on it right you could see where everything goes right or I guess if you're tearing yours all apart though to avoid tearing yours all apart you buy that and you avoid buying gaskets and the possibility of breaking things or in a lot of these you got to remove the motor right rather than go through all that pain and suffering if you uh, look at the pictures on a used one um, and you might have to look at more than one set of pictures um, you, you can figure it out I also figure it out because I know that pulse generators typically have resistances you know somewhere around 300 ohms give or take a little bit and uh, that's not always a rule the Honda ATC 200S some of the newer ones have a much lower resistance somewhere around 35 so you know but I can kind of poke around all the wires that are available on the uh, on the plug that comes from the stator and you know you can kind of guess by the resistance rating if you have two extremely low resistance wires somewhere around 0.7 ohms you know those are legs of the stators that should go out to um, to the voltage regulator you know if you get one somewhere around 300 ohms you, you know you could guess oh that's the one that goes to the uh, to the pulse generator right if you get one with a little a little more resistance kind of a stator winding somewhere around one and a half or so you know that goes to a stator winding that that powers a CDI you can kind of fake your way through it if with a little bit of knowledge and a meter anyway I hope this helped everyone um, for some people I draw schematics and they say oh I got it and for some people if I show them how to wire it as I did with this they say oh I got it ah oh, that's a piece of cake I should have done this a hundred years ago anyway so we wired a DC powered CDI box we got spark and we did it with junk I think that's pretty cool I want to thank everybody for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember, feet down, heads up, and don't throw it away. You might need it. Bye now.